everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States. That's 10am if you're in Australia or around 1am if you're in the UK. It's good to see you guys. I hope you're all well, I hope you all had a good weekend. Uh, remember, if you do miss the live streams, you can catch up at any time by clicking the videos tab on my Twitch channel. I upload all of my previous streams to Twitch, so they'll be there forever. <laughs> you can also uh, watch them back on my YouTube channel. Uh, remember too, if you do want to join the Phil Does 3D Discord server, click the link Hellforge has popped into Twitch chat, thank you. Or um, go to the About Me page on my Twitch channel and you'll find a link to the Discord server in my panels. You'll also find a link there to wishlist the game that we're going to be working on today called The House on the Hollow on Steam. Um, so yeah, that's it. You can, you can find all of that in the panel section on my Twitch channel. Or at any time you can type exclamation Steam in Twitch chat and get a link that way. But it's good to see you guys. Sniper Girl, nine minutes. Come on faster. <laughs> Wax Kink, it's good to see you. Wax Kink, I hope you're well. Smokeberry Barbecue, always good to see you. And of course, Hellforge. So yes, we're working on the House on the Hollow game. What are we talking about here? You haven't eaten supper, Sniper Girl? We'll go and have some supper. <laughs> I haven't had lunch yet. It's still a bit early for me. I'll do that after the stream. Yeah, and you're reading about terrain uh, erosion techniques, Smurfberry. Wow. Okay, in UE4 I'm assuming, maybe? <laughs> uh, yeah, do post a link in the Discord. Oh, it's programmatic stuff, okay. <laughs> well, some people could still be interested in the programmatic stuff, Smurf. You can still post a link in the Discord, that's okay. Whether, you know, anything to do with art, whether it's programming art or whatever. It's all good. It's about time Sniper Girl says. <laughs> I'm really well, thanks for asking. <laughs> Actually, it's, uh, yeah, no, I'm good. We got a lot of, um, we, we find, it, we finished implementing the save and the load system in the game. We were having an issue with the inventory, but that's all sorted, so that's all good. <laughs> so yes, I'm, I'm good. It's good to see you too, Wax King. Okay, so what are we doing? We are working on the kitchen for the house and the holly game. So we're going to be jumping straight into the Unreal Engine and continue doing what we were doing last week. So we started setting up our kitchen here. Let me just move into the middle of the room. Not a very big room, but you know, the kitchen. Bigger than my kitchen anyway. <laughs> uh, Sniper Girl says, 7pm, told myself I'll, I will test out the tablet tomorrow. That's right, because you bought that new um, screen tablet. Uh, test out the tablet tomorrow. It's just arrived today, so no rush. Uh, yeah, in ZBrush now started playing around with it. It's 7 p.m. It's actually 10 a.m. for me here. I'm going to come to you from the future, so 10 a.m. tomorrow for you people in the U.S. and in Europe. Um, yeah, so what you find, do you like the new screen tablet? Again, Sniper Girl bought a, um, a tablet. It was a brand that I hadn't heard of before. I see in the Discord you said you can't actually um, assign shortcuts to the keys on the side of the tablet, which is a bit of a nut, bit of a shame. But uh, how are you finding it overall, as far as use goes? Another girl says, "So yeah, haven't eaten, was having fun. <laughs> okay, you love it so far? Cool. And you got it for a really good price too, didn't you? You bought it? Did you buy it on eBay? Again, I I don't like eBay. I wouldn't suggest anyone buy anything from eBay, but uh, <laughs> I think she bought it from eBay." It is available on Amazon as well. So, just putting that out there. But it does make using a tablet easier. The, the tablets that have the built-in screen as opposed to the ones that don't are always easy to use. Okay, and what's what's the resolution of the screen on it? Is it 1080p? Like 1920 by 1080? I think it is. I think that's what the spec said from memory. Sniper Girl says, I have minor complaints. No, you can't assign shortcuts, but you... Oh, no, you can assign shortcuts, but you can't save the profile. 
would ideally like the ability to have it recognize the program and auto load profiles. Oh, okay, okay, I understand. Well, at least you can assign shortcuts, that's important. The profile thing, I could see how that could be annoying and helpful if you had it. So. Alrighty, uh, yeah, and as compared to buying, say, a Wacom tablet which with a screen, because those things are over a grand US at least. Um, it, it was a really good price that you picked, the, the one that you're uh, using up for. It's not Wacom, but it doesn't matter as long as it works well. Uh, there was a period there for where Wacom was... Uh, Wacom is still really... Wacom, Wacom, however you want to pronounce the damn word. <laughs> I have Wacom tablets. Wacom. Um, we're, we're, they're still used in the industry a lot. Like, a lot of design studios use Wacom, but they... <laughs> It used to be years ago that the cheaper um, non non Wacom brands weren't very good. Um, I don't. That, that's obviously not the case anymore. So keep that in mind if you do want to buy a tablet, whether it's just one with a screen or without a screen. Um, look for some alternatives apart from Wacom or Wacom, because uh, Snappy Girl seems happy with the one she bought. So. Snappy Girl says, and my other complaint is that the thing is a bit light. Uh, I've pushed down on it, tend to be heavy handed sometimes in ZBrush. Ooh, ZBrush. Uh, I'll probably end up weighing it down a bit. Okay. Yeah, the, the Wacom ones can be pretty light as well though. Uh, not the screen ones so much, but the normal ones. Uh, what I actually end up doing, what I do, oh, you, you won't, can't do this because you actually, you know, you want to move it around or hold it or whatever. But with my tablets, I, I actually put blue tack underneath of them and stick them down to my desk so that they don't move around when I'm using the tablet. So that's always an option. Blue tack. Love the blue tack. <laughs> I actually use it on a lot of things. I've got my one of my keyboards I, I stick down with blue tack as well underneath of it. So it doesn't move around. Uh, Snappy Girl says, just say I've moved it back a few times. Sculpting. Snappy Girl says, oh wow, that's a great idea. We'll do that. Snappy Girl says, because I have a dedicated spot for it currently. I'm oh, yeah, Blue Tech. Love Blue Tech. I use it <laughs> all the time. Like I said, I use it under my Wacom tablets to stop them from moving when I'm, you know, using my pen too, too hard on it. Uh, I also use up some of the keyboards and actually I think I have a little bit under my mouse mat as well to stop it from sliding around. It's a hard mouse mat by the way. It won't work so well on a soft mouse mat but a hard mouse mat works really well. Stops it from moving. Okay, so we're going to start keep bringing some assets into the Unreal Engine. For the kitchen. Uh, Snappy Girl says, also wish the screen mount was a bit higher. Oh. But these are minor complaints. Overall, it's a good tablet. Well, there you go. And if you guys want to check out the tablet that she purchased, jump on the Discord server because I'm, she posted a link, I'm sure, on the Discord last week. At least to the Amazon um, one she was looking at buying. Oh, to answer my question, it's 1080p. Well, there you go. 1080p. Which is more than enough for a screen that you're going to be using as a tablet. So, well, that's what most people game on these days, 1080p. Ten eighty P is the most popular resolution for computer gaming, according to the Steam survey anyway. Alright, so I think the next thing we'll bring in here, we might bring the curtain in. Uh, we don't want to go there, we want to go there. Model Kitchen Curtain. Kitchen curtain. I actually should start um, going through this and cleaning it up a little bit. <laughs> Let's start by getting rid of some of these materials that we don't need. And I don't think we need the kitchen walls either. Unreal will tell me if I'm deleting something it wants. It wants me to keep. 
long as I don't get an error uh, warning message, we're good to delete. Okay, that's better. Let's just rename this one kitchen curtain underscore match for material. And open that up. And let's import the textures. <laughs> did I not export the textures for the kitchen curtain? It doesn't look like I did, you know. Oh, Phil. Okay, that's okay. We'll do that real quick. Let's open up Substance Painter. <laughs> Too busy working away and not exporting the textures. Uh, Sniper Girl says, really? If I ever get a video card, I'll for sure 4K game on my PC. Well, I 4K game, but I didn't want, I didn't want to brag. Um, most people on the Steam survey, though, say they they actually game uh, at 1080p. So the uh, the average next-gen video card people are using is a 2060, and the resolution they game in is 1080p. But I, I game in 4K as well. It's the whole point of being able to game on a computer, on a PC, is being able to game in 4K. All the consoles, theoretically, you can run in 4K now too. Uh, hang on. Phil's getting confused. What's going on here? Kitchen. Good. There we go. But remember too that if you do want to game in 4K, you're going to need a pretty beefy graphics card. Whether it's AMD or Nvidia, you're going to need a beefy, beefy graphics card. Hellforge says, hey Phil, hope you're doing well. I'm doing really well too. Hellforge, I hope you are as well. I hope you had a good weekend. Have some coffee. Good suggestion. Mm. <sighs> I do like the coffee. Sniper Girl says, uh, bad Phil, <laughs> need to export textures. I know, can you believe that we, we, we textured it up and I forgot to export the textures? I mean... No, it's that old brain of mine, Sniper Girl. You know what? You know what I'm like. <laughs> Let's export the textures, shall we? Into the kitchen folder, the curtain subfolder. Let's use my template. Uh, and <laughs> making sure everything is correct, and let's export. Okay, let's save that and jump back into Unreal. Let's try this take two. Here we go. We want the color, the metallic, the normal, and the rough. And let's bring them in. Get rid of this one because we don't need it. You're shocked, aren't you, people? Because I'm working immediately. I'm not sitting here and chatting for half an hour. My YouTube audience will be happy. Let's uh, hook up the base color, the metallic, the normal, and the rough. Um, 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 um. Let's close that down. And let's bring the curtain in. Uh, Snappy Girl says, ordering food, no cooking. You're ordering food again. Didn't you order food a couple of times last week? <laughs> oh, look, I can't blame you. I don't, I don't cook every night either. I mean, I do cook, but um, I get takeout a bit as well because it's so convenient. And Phil's usually so tired he doesn't want to cook. Um, Smurf says 67.6% of the machines on the April Steam hardware survey are 1920 by 1080. Yep, it's the most popular resolution people are gaming at. Uh, Smurf says 1440p follows that, way behind at 8.23%. 
Yeah, and I think 4K is even below that. It's like either 2 or 4% or something. It's, it's pretty low, 4K gaming. It's because you need such a, a, a beefy graphics card to run a game in 4K. I mean, remember, 4K is four times the resolution of 1080p, so... Yeah. But it does look so cool running a game in 4K. So crisp, crisp. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Snappy Girl says, why not 69%? Um, Hellwood says, YouTube. No, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> no, I love my YouTube audience as much as my Twitch audience. I love you people on YouTube watching me. Thank you for, for watching the channel. I should say this more often because I never, I, every time I watch a YouTube video and you know at the beginning of every YouTube video or at the end, they usually say, make sure you, make sure you hit that like button. That always makes me cringe. I hate that. I mean, if people want to hit the like button on YouTube, they'll hit the like button. And if they don't, you telling them to hit the like button is not going to make them hit the like button. So <laughs> yeah, make sure you subscribe and make sure you hit that like button. You'll notice my videos, I don't say that. Smurf says, the next biggest is probably laptops because it's uh, 1366 by 768 at 7.47%. And after that, no other resolution even has 3%. Well, there you go. I thought, I, I know, I, I thought that 4K was in, it was either the 2 or the 4%. So it must be in the 2% then. Um, yeah. But I, I, and I'm pretty sure that the, the most popular RTX graphics card is a 2060. But the NVIDIA RTX, obviously. Thank you, Hellforge. There's my YouTube channel link there. If you do want to follow me on YouTube and hit that like button. <laughs> Snappy Girls, look, I do appreciate it if you do hit the like button. Don't think I'm, I'm saying you shouldn't. Uh, Snappy Girl says, just means you were really replaced by a lizard person, that's all. Because everyone knows the real fill takes 30 minutes to get ready. That's right, I'm one of those lizard people alien things. <laughs> That's such a bizarre... I don't know what you call it. Thought that people have, that these lizard people things. Uh, Hellboard says, and now for a word from our sponsor, Raid Sh Shadow Legends. My big girl says, uh, or NordVPN. I do want to point out too, I do, I, I keep forgetting, I don't mention it enough, but Hellforge is one of my mods, Sniper Girl is one of my mods, Smurf is one of my mods as well. Uh, Hellforge does stream on Twitch as well, so you guys should check his channel out when he's streaming. He's in Europe, so he streams at a different time to me, but if you're in Europe or in the US, I'm sure you, there's a time when you, when you can watch him. Um, I can't watch him a lot because he streams, but I'm like asleep in the middle of the early hours of the morning. But, um... No problem, Hellforge. So let's bring this curtain in. Hang on. Hang on. Let me just work out what I'm doing wrong here. Okay. Um, I have to make sure I'm in this one here. In the persistent. I'm actually going to be moving everything that we put in the kitchen into its own level. Or well, sub-level, really. Um, and the reason that we got that warning was because, again, we've been doing updates to the uh, to the game and implementing the save and load system, and also implementing loading screen systems. So, Jizan, yeah. hey Jizan, it's good to see you. I hope you're well, and I hope you had a good weekend, Jizan. Uh, so let's try that again, shall we? Let's move the curtain in. Let's rotate it around so it's facing in the right direction. Yes, and I know, Phil has been bad and hasn't sized his curtain correctly, so let's just do that. And it needs to be a little bit bigger. Uh, Jizan says, no nah, man, this project I've been working on has been a rough one. <laughs> Uh, good money, but way too many changes. Uh, yeah, you, say, you know, when I do um, contract work for people, 
I actually put in the contract how many revisions they get to stop that type of thing happening because otherwise people will just if you give them open slather they'll just constantly want things changed so yeah every contract that I do for someone uh, it's actually stipulated in the contract how many revisions they get And that way I can avoid that problem. Snappy Girl says, ouch. Uh, Snappy Girl says, wish you luck. <laughs> and Jizan says, thanks and all good. I just charge a day. Oh, a day rate. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, that's okay then because you're going to get paid either way more. Every revision that they want, if you do, if you're doing a day rate, then um, yep, no problem there. <laughs> they can have as many revisions as they want. I would have thought if they're paying you for them. But yeah, just be aware of that. If you do do contract work for somebody else, so the way contracting generally works is um, somebody wants something done, you say you'll do it for them by a certain date, and this is how much you're going to charge them. So usually, yeah, they say, I want you to make this and you say, okay, this is how much it's going to cost. This is when I have it ready. And, uh, and in, in, and I also, like I said, in my contracts, I put in and you will get this many revisions on the, um, deliverable. Generally, I give them three revisions. So the first revision is, you know, because they don't really know what they want. A lot of people and <laughs> I found. Most people really don't know what they want and it takes at least three, it takes around three revisions to get to where they actually want, what, to, to get them what they actually want. So, yeah. But after three revisions, if they want it revi revised anymore, then I have to, I charge them again. So, everybody knows where they stand right up front. All right, let's just do a save and I'll have a coffee. Sniper Girl says, really, people don't know what they want usually? <laughs> Get out of here. No, that's right. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk people didn't, wouldn't really know what they want? Well, they change their mind a lot, a lot as well. Yeah, if, if you give them too much leeway, they'll just keep going forever. People will change their mind. People, you know, will see something and they'll think, "Oh, that'd be really nice if I put that in that. If if he, if he put that in there for me or designed it to look a bit more like this." And then it's just never ending. So you gotta lock it down. Lock it down in the contract up front. It's good for you and it's good for them. Uh, but if you're doing a day rate like uh, Jizan is, then it doesn't, it's, it's less important because you're going to get paid either way. Uh, let's see, what will we bring in next? Um, 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 I think we'll bring in the actual, uh, which I think they're already in, uh, the actual cabinets themselves. Now, the cabinets, are, I brought them in, but they don't have doors or drawers because I have to bring in physics objects. Uh, interactive physics objects for those and place them in. and I haven't actually <laughs> I think I've set the physics up on them in max but I haven't actually brought them into the engine yet so we'll bring the cupboards in but the cupboards won't have doors or drawers and I don't know if we'll get them in today I'll see how I go we'll see how we go um okay so kitchen bottom left let's try that one let's rotate it around Kitchen bottom left, yeah. So the left is, well, that's actually the right hand side. Am I right around the wrong way? Kitchen bottom left. No, that's the left hand side. <laughs> Bill doesn't know he's left from his right. That's the left hand side. I'm right. It's, it's cool. It's all good. It's all good. Man. So we had, uh, my, my thought was to put this down in this corner down here.
Okay, I'm just making sure it's on the floor. And, 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 and. We are going into our curtain a little bit, so I might just move this forward a touch. As long as we don't go past the edge of the door, we should be good. Actually, the kitchen's a bit bigger than I thought it was. Uh, th these are assets are sized correctly. That's why they're already in the engine. I did test these to make sure that the size of them was correct, as far as the height went for the player. Um, unfortunately, we can't, you know, when I've been putting these rooms together, I've been playing in the editor to show you guys what it looked like when it was running in real time. Uh, I can't do that anymore because of the fact that we've introduced the save and the load system now. So. Uh, and all of the menu systems are integrated into the game. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, if I pr try to press play, it's not going to play where we are. It's going to start playing from um, the menu. So no more play in editor, I'm afraid. You'll just have to wait till the game's released now to see it running in real time. Uh, Snappy Girl says, I'm officially organized on my computer. Have a petition for 3D work, one for textures and materials, and one for photogrammetry. Well, that's good. That's the way to be. So you've set up a different petition. You're not just using a folder structure. I don't actually petition my hard drives anymore. Hmm. I use folders, but... Yeah, so yeah, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to let you guys know, yeah, I can't play in the editor anymore. The game has all of this stuff integrated into it now, so... Yeah, as soon as I press play in the editor, it launches the main menu and it starts running all this video stuff and yeah. <laughs> um, Gizan says, should I update my M.2 drive? M drive? I don't know. Why should you? How big is your M.2 drive? I love NVMe drives. Love them, love them. It's pretty old. Maybe about, oh, about seven years. <laughs> yeah, I probably would. Um, yeah, because SSDs, the chips, the silicon in them degrades. I'm actually surprised it's lasted seven years, but uh, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. SSDs are pretty reliable these days. But I, I would probably upgrade after seven years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Yeah, remember too, if you don't have a spare MVM uh, M.2 slot on your motherboard, you, the um, the old M.2 that you take out, you can put that in an external enclosure and plug it in via USB. So you can still use it that way even if you don't have a spare slot, if you want to replace it with another one. So it's not like it's going to be wasted. Put it in an external enclosure. They're really cheap. They're only like 10 or $15. And use it by USB as our external storage. Sniper Girl says no partition. No partition. No partition. Hang on. Figured it would be a good idea to have a bunch of models and stuff in in the same places. Um, same with materials, just in case I end up pulling them for other projects. <laughs> okay. Smurf says, download the drive utility from the manufacturer to find out what the health of the drive is. That's a very good suggestion, how, uh, Smurf. Yeah, do that. It'll tell you um, how, yeah, what the condition the drive is in. Usually SSD drives are rated to so many writes. So, you know, so many terabytes of writes before as part of the warranty of the drive. Once you exceed that, then you start risking the thing dying. And remember, with an SSD, when they die, they just stop. It's not like a hard drive where it'll start to click or you'll start getting copy errors or anything like that. They generally just stopped working. So if you, you, you be careful. <laughs> Make sure you're backing your stuff up. Uh, Smurf says, although I was seven year, years of age, well, the uh, drivers weren't super great seven years ago to begin with. So, Snappy Girl says, yeah, agreed. Uh, SSD will die without warning. Had that happen? Yeah, they do. They just they just stop. And yeah, and they, and they, they are harder to get, um, get the information back off of once they do die, than a hard drive. So just keep that in mind, guys. 
bottom right. Um, yeah, if it dies, it'll just die. But they're still much better than hard drives. I mean, you know. And like I, like I said, I I I have our NVMe SSDs, and I love them. The speed of them is just amazing. Yeah, this kitchen is actually a lot bigger than I thought, which is good. Because I was worried that we, <laughs> that I wouldn't be able to use all the assets that we'd made because of space. But uh, I think we'll be fine. So that's good. I wish my kitchen was this size. Actually, my kitchen's pokey. I've got one of those kitchens. I don't know if you guys, you know, an open plan where you've got, you don't have a separate room for the kitchen and the lounge room. They're both like combined with a, an island bench between the two of them. That's what my kitchen's like. So does mean that I can watch TV while I'm cooking if I want, but yeah, I'm used to having a separate room for the kitchen. Every other place I've lived just had a separate room. But everything's open plan now. People want to be able to entertain people and talk in the kitchen while they cook and see them and speak to them and, you know, so everything's sort of integrated now. Uh, Juzan says it only has my Windows boot. Oh, and maybe a few programs. Well, <laughs> that's less of a problem if it dies. Particularly if you've made a backup of your Windows boot, it should be easy to reinst uh, reinstate. Uh, I do the same thing. Um, my, one of my SSDs is purely for Windows and program installation. One of them is uh, is a design work SSD. Um, and then I have hard drives for other design work. An SSD dedicated to just games. And then an, an SSD that's for back. Uh, sorry, a hard drive, an external hard drive for backup. So that's a good way to do it, Chizan. Sniper Girl says my food will be here in five minutes. What did you order? Oh, do tell us. Make me hungry. What, what are you having for dinner, Sniper Girl? Smurf says uh, SSD NVMe drives each have a terabyte. Each have a terabytes written rating that is inf informative about how much you've used the drive. They certainly do. Let me show you an example of my SSDs. So I, I use I have Samsung SSD, so I'm going to open up Samsung Lab. <laughs> Samsung Magician, which is their SSD program for reading and telling you the health of your drives. And here you can see um, where is it? There, here, here you can see how many terabytes I've written on the, these are both uh, NVMe SSDs that's the gaming SSD these are my hard drives which is why they're not showing up here as drive health because this only reads SSDs and that's my external to hard drive but yeah uh, it tells you exactly how much you've written to the drive and it tells you what the condition of the drive is and also tells you the temperature if you're really interested in that sort of stuff and also um, how much you've used and what the, if you benchmark it, what the speed of the drive is. So Samsung Magician is a very good software. Of course, you only work with a Samsung drive, but any, any hard drive um, has that sort of software generally now that you can download and install. Sniper Girl says, Okay, uh, Snapper Girl says, uh, I love entertaining people, all my wonderful imaginary friends. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I I'm a bit of a hermit. I never leave the house. Oh, that's not true. Well, it was true for a while there with the human malware, but um, I like spending time at home. Does that make me strange? Am I one of those strange people that like spending time at home? That's the reason I work from home. Um, I still have to go into the office to do meetings and stuff, but that's the reason I chose to work from home because I like my own company. I'm one of those weird people who does like their own company. Let's do a save and I'll have a coffee. Smurf says my new OS drive has a terabyte written rating of 2,800 terabytes. Mm, that'll last that should last a while then because uh you, you saw my drives I've, I've written about four terabytes worth of data on them and i've had them well one of them's not that old one of them i bought when i rebuilt the when i built the new computer the other one i took out of 
Did I? Yeah, I took it out of the old computer, I think. Yeah. So. But yeah, they've got. I'm not sure how many terabytes I can write to them, but it's a lot. They'll last at least five, six years. So. Well, they should. Touch wood. Jinx myself now. Uh, Snappy Girl says, just a chicken sandwich and fries. Also a shake. Oh, that sounds nice. I like a chicken sandwich. Chic I love chicken and avocado. I mentioned to you guys last week, uh, when I get a pizza, I like to get chicken, avocado and chili pizzas. Love chicken and avocado. Yum. And fries. Yes, I like fries too. And a shake. I haven't had a shake for a very long time, actually. I used to really like uh, shakes, but I haven't had one for years. Smurf says, uh, I th well, my favourite shake is strawberry, actually. Strawberry or vanilla, but I like strawberry. Smurf says, I think my old uh, 2016 era SSDs have a terabyte written rating of like 600. 600 terabytes is still a lot. I mean, you saw I've used, I've written four terabytes. Um, so 600 is still going to last you a very long time. I almost couldn't stream this morning, and I'm just looking at OBS. I almost couldn't stream because I did the cumulative update for Windows 10 last week, and uh, I hadn't opened up OBS because I did the update after I'd finished my stream last week. Uh, and hadn't op opened up OBS, obviously, because until today, because this is when I'm streaming. And my audio was all whack. Like, the update changed all my audio settings. And it, so, so, like, you know, 9.30 this morning, well, just before the, half an hour before the stream this morning, I open up OBS, I open up Audition, and I'm getting no audio. So I had a half an hour to pull, <laughs> work out what the hell was going on. And I should have realized, because every time Microsoft do a cumulative update, it seems to reorder your sound devices for some reason. At least it does for me on all my computers. Um, I don't know what Microsoft are doing when they do those cumulative updates. Oh, the other thing that was really weird too, when I did the cu cumulative update last week, I went to open up uh, Unreal and I kept getting uh, Direct3D device errors popping up constantly. Like I couldn't open the program. It kept crashing. The editor here that you see. Um, so that was after I did the cumulative update. So I did the update. I rebooted the computer like you know it does during the update process. When it rebooted, I tried to open up Unreal. Crash, 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 crash. Uh, so that freaked me out for a while. I was almost contemplating um, updating to a newer graphics driver, but I like the driver I'm using. But basically what happened was I rebooted the machine again, and that seemed to have fixed the problem. So just putting that out there, if you do have a problem ever with, uh, with something not working after a cumulative update of Windows 10, do another reboot on the computer. And uh, since I've done that, it's been fine. Oh, PCs, I tell you. I mean, I do love them. I love PC gaming, Master Race, but sometimes. Snobby Girl says, uh, just be honest, are you what, are you whatever the male equivalent is of a crazy cat lady? <laughs> well, I like cats, so yes, you can call me a crazy cat lady if you want. Snobby Girl says, my favourite shake is honestly something I'd have to make myself. Mountain Dew, <laughs> Mountain Dew again. Um, voltage mixed into vanilla ice cream and small chunks of Oreo. Oh, that does sound nice, but man, that would be so sweet. <laughs> I mean, you guys know I love Oreos. I haven't had them for a while because I'm cutting back on my sugar, but man. Smurf says, uh, wait, I guess my older ones are only, are only model year 2018. Still, it just goes to show how fast they've managed to improve the endurance of solid state storage recently. So a seven-year-old drive would worry me. Ah, uh, but yeah, I'd look at the manufacturer's diagnostic tool to know the health of the specific installed drive. I always recommend you install the manufacturer's diagnostic tool, yeah. It's always good to have on the computer just in case you want to see what your temperatures are, how many terabytes you've written, and just the general health of the drive. Sniper Girl says it's a, a milkshake. Aren't they supposed to be sweet? <laughs> Yeah, I know they are, but man, Oreos in the milkshake, that's sweet, that's sweet on sweet. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you'll notice our benches here do, uh, don't have uh, cupboard doors. We will bring those in, but not immediately. So you'll just have to imagine for the time being until I bring them in. Okay, so now we've got the lower ones in, let's bring in the upper one. So kitchen bottom left, kitchen bottom right. 
kitchen top left. And this is one of those really weird shaped um, kitchen cupboard things. Just make sure it's back to the wall correctly. It is. And I think we'll bring it down so it's just in line with the side of the curtain here. You see, this actually sticks out. The design of it is it sticks out past the wall. So we can actually bring this down anywhere we want. Um, and so I might bring it down a little bit more so it, I don't really want it to overhang the curtain too much. Though. That should be good. I'm just going to make sure with a player when they're standing here can actually get to the cupboard to open it up. And they should be able to. If we find that they can't, then we can move it down a little bit more so it overhangs the art curtain a little bit. If we wanted to, it was actually really originally designed, I believe, to go down there, but we could bring it over here like this. But for the moment, we won't overhang the curtain too much. Uh, for the height of the cupboard, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, work that out when we bring these splashes in. Uh, the splashes, by splashes I mean the, the tiling that goes between the cabinet at the bottom and the cabinet at the top. Let's bring in the other one. So top right. Just going to leave it about here, but we'll adjust the height uh, in a minute. <laughs> I'm just wondering, did I? You know, I rotated that, didn't I? Because we have to rotate this 90 degrees. I think I rotated this 90 degrees. I'm just trying to make sure that we could open. We could actually rotate this so it's on this wall if we wanted to. Because I'm trying to remember if it was. Let's jump into Max really quickly. I'm just going to do a save because I need to check the design. Because <laughs> I can't remember. <sighs> I can't remember which way I had the kitchen cabinet. Not that it matters, we could just play around with it in Unreal, but I'd like to, to double check. So I'm just going to open up Max. Sniper Girl says, wow, the fries were actually not stale. I'm amazed. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. I hate it too when you get soggy fries. You know, sometimes, I don't know what they do, but sometimes you can get soggy fries. I don't like that either. Let's open up the kitchen cabinet folder. Kitchen. 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 And I did actually, the, you, if you see here, this, this cabinet's actually meant to go against this wall over here. So let's let's change that. I, th I thought there was something a little bit off with what was going on here. So 
so this needs to be rotated. That makes more sense. <laughs> there we go. And the player can still reach the cupboard with these, so that's better. Again, just double checking, I am correct. Yes, I am correct, that's the way it's meant to go. <sighs> okay, uh, we're gonna actually have to bring the tiles in as well. I don't think I brought those in. So let's save all. And have a copy. Uh, 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 uh. Why is my Discord closed? Hang on. There we go. I don't know why I have my Discord closed. Where's green? The tiles, let's bring the tiles in, the wall tiles. Um, kitchen tiles left, kitchen tiles right. Let's rename this Kitchen Tiles. And what were they? Were they the left or the right? I can't remember already. Left. <laughs> kitchen Tiles left. Underscore map. Jizan says, anyone know how to make a normal map from ZBrush? You, you have, I can't help you there. You, you guys know how I feel about ZBrush. I'm sure there is a way. ZBrush program. Um, let's bring in the kitchen tiles right now. Port. 
So we want the color, the metallic, the normal and the raw. And let's bring those in. Color metallic. And metallic it looks like is just black so we could probably swap that out for a constant normal and a rough just because you had the last bar doesn't mean and let's do the right Juzan saying I feel like I'll lose detail if I bake. Not the girl says all my texture baking is done in Marmoset. Does a wonderful job in texture baking. Uh, way better than painter or anything else that I use. I I found painter not to be too bad. I tend to use Mighty Bake if I'm doing um normal map baking though. Most of the time. It's just that's all it does is normal map baking, so um, I actually see Euro mentioned here that um, in, in, in the Discord. She's on. Uh, you are Euro, aren't you? I can't. I can't remember. I'm confused. Um, but anyway, Euro says that Marmoset are looking. Uh, there's a job opening up Marmoset for a material and texture artist. So, do you guys know anyone, or you want to have a go at it yourself? Then uh, you should check it out. Because they'd be cool to work for. All right, so let's bring these tiles in, shall we? Uh, tiles left. Yeah, we want to rotate it around. And this will tell us how high we need our um, uh, top cabinets to be. Something not quite right here. What's Phil done wrong? Phil's done something wrong. When in doubt, back into Max. Okay. Okay. I'm wondering if the scale is not correct. No, it should be correct. Um, 
think something is not right. Well, I know to begin with, we have to pull this forward a little bit because we had to pull the um, the bench forward a little bit because of the curtain. No, that, that's right. That is correct. That's, that's correct. I'm okay. It's okay. <laughs> Bill was momentarily confused, but I think we're good. Let's bring that in right up to the edge. Uh, so that means we need to bring the cabinet down. I'll just pull this up just a little bit. So that it sits between there and the cabinet, uh, the top of the, the cabinet there, the bench top. Uh, actually, I think what I'm going to do here is I might actually just deviate a little bit from the original design in that we have our cabinets here going through the um, through the wall panels. So what, what I might do is just lift them up a little bit so that they sit just above that um, I don't know, what, what do you, what do we call, what would we call this? It's, it's it does have a name. I'm not, I'm not a ledge, but you, you guys know what I mean. The, the, that thing. Uh, and I think what I'll do here because of that is I might just scale the uh, tile up a little bit just in the Z. I think what I'm going to need to do too is I'm going to need to move this back a bit. And I really should move it in. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm, I'm going to have to move the kitchen cupboard back a little as well. Uh, we do have this issue now with the curtain, so I think for that what I might do is I might but, I mean, it's not terrible. Um, what's the best way to fix that? Maybe Let's just try moving it up to begin with. I just want to see how far I have to go up. That that would probably work. So it's resting against the back of our tap, but it's not going into our tap, so that's okay. Again, I need another. That's correct. I'm just seeing. I, I was wondering why I didn't in, uh, extend the tile here all the way down to the end. Um, because I think when I designed it, I designed it to finish in line with the edge of the top cup cupboard cabinet. But I think. I'm think I'm wondering now whether I should extend it all the way down. It, it would look better. That looks a little odd now that it's actually in the room. I mean, it, it made sense when we were designing it, but uh, seeing it in the actual room now, I actually think it would be better if the tile was extended. But for that, we're going to have to guesstimate it again. So it's going to be about three quarters of that length again. So let's uh, isolate this piece of geometry. Uh, 
Yeah. Let's do it in the top viewport. It'll probably be easier for me to see what I'm doing. So we're going to grab that and we're going to extend it. And let's re export the model. Uh, into the kitchen folder, we want kitchen, kitchen tiles left, that's the one we're working on, kitchen tiles left, yes we want to replace it, uh, that does mean we're going to have to jump into painter and re-export the texture. It's just warning me that it was uh, it opened in a, it created an earlier version of Substance, but that's fine. Um, we're going to update the project configuration with the new exported model. Kitchen tiles left, and re. -ex actually, I'm just going to make. I'm. Just, no, we should be okay. Yeah, I was going to say I, I might uh, rebake, but I don't think we need to rebake because the UVs didn't change, just, just the geometry changed. So. Uh, Gizan says, I'm in the USA, or maybe I heard you wrong. No, no, I. I <laughs> you're not Euro in Discord, are you, Gizan? That's what I was uh, asking. So I know that Euro changed his name. And I, I, I don't think you are. If you're in the US, I think you're as in Europe. <laughs> so, anyway, ignore me. <laughs> I need more coffee. Happy Girl says, uh, trim piece tile border. <laughs> I'm choking on my coffee. Um, Sniper Girl says curtain can be scaled down on the Z just a, yeah, just a tad, nobody will notice. That's true, I could do that too. Oh, Jazan says, oh no, my name was Edo. I'm sorry, that's why I'm getting confused. Euro and Edo, I'm getting those two confused. So, so I thought, Jazan, you changed your username, but I thought it was Euro. Anyway, it's okay. I'm, it's just Phil being confu getting confused as usual. Let's re-export the texture. <laughs> uh, that's all cool, that's all cool. Export. Um, I actually don't even know if I needed to re-export the textures now I think about it. Let's re-import the um, model. Tiles left. And I need to go just a little bit bigger. I didn't guesstimate it correctly. Um, we do start to have an issue now though that we're going to start to get the tile stretching. So what I think we're going to do is I'm going to extend it a little bit more. So back into max. And let's just bring it out a little bit more. So maybe about that much. If I go over it doesn't matter. We can go into the window frame. In fact, I'll go a little bit more. Re-export the model. Kitchen tiles left. Uh, actually, what I'm going to need to do too here is I'm going to have to send it into Ryzen. We need to re-UV map it because we're starting to get stretching happening in our UVs. So we're just going to quickly re-UV map it again. Send it back to max. And 
Now with re UV map today, I'm going to have to uh, rebake it in substance, but let's re export the model. My apologies for those dings. I'm not sure how loud it is on your, on the stream on your end. It's not that loud here, but it, it get, it's obviously going through my mic as well as going through. Um, what do they call it? <laughs> through scan converter, through NDI. So it might make it louder than it really is. Okay, so now we've done that. Let's uh, edit the project configuration. Reload up the model. Uh, now we're going to have to rebake out the maps. Uh, ID as vertex color, good. Okay, re-export the texture. This is why I do like Substance Painter. It makes working between Unreal and uh, and everything else really easy. Let's save the project jump back into Unreal. There is a bridge you can install as well, which I don't, I, I don't like those bridges, you know, where you can send it directly from Substance to Unreal and vice versa. Uh, I, I personally don't like those. So now we have to re-import the textures. So let's just do that. And we should be good to go. Yeah, and I just think it looks better to have that meet the edge of the curtain as opposed to the way it was where we were seeing this tile, which is actually the wall tile. The splashback um, needed to go all the way to the edge. Did I... Did, looks like I may have just gone a bit short. That's annoying. That is so annoying. Oh man. There's a couple of things I can do. I can probably, as opposed to re-exporting this again, just for something that's that much too short, we can move the um, window frame over a little, I think. I think that'll be a better way to go. So, Let's try that. So we're up there, there. That should be good. Okay. Let's bring this side in now. We shouldn't have as many issues with this one. So we'll bring that in. Rotate it 90 degrees. Snappy Girl says nobody will notice. No, no, nobody probably would have noticed that little gap there either. Um, but moving the frame over, we fixed it anyway. But you're right. Once the lighting is turned on, uh, the people wouldn't have noticed that more than likely. But we, we fixed it anyway. We, yeah. So let's bring this in. bring this covered down so it's just above that ledge ledge that was the word I was looking for okay so far so good let's do a quick save Again, you guys know I have to save regularly because I turn auto save off on all of my software. Um, which means if I don't remember to save and something happens and it crashes, then I've lost my work. And I turn auto save off because I hate the program 
pitching when I'm trying to work. You know, when it saves in the background automatically, it can tend to freeze the program for a second or however long it takes for the program to um, to save the file. And if it's a big file, it can take a lot longer. So the program could be frozen for like 10 seconds. That's really annoying. <laughs> so that's the reason I turn auto save off. But that does mean I must remember to save manually. Okay, now we're going to work out where we're going to put the fridge and where we're going to put the uh, stove. So, my initial thought was the stove could go here and the fridge could go here. What are your guys' thoughts? I can design the kitchen around any way you guys think would be good. Let's, let's bring the oven and the, and the um, fridge in anyway. So, kitchen... Uh, we want... Put the kitchen on the ceiling, Snowberries. <laughs> you want the kitchen on the ceiling? You mean put the cooker on the ceiling? And, or you want, you want everything on the ceiling? You want me to turn everything around and stick it up on the ceiling? That would make it hard for the player to open the cupboards, but anyway. Okay, now the oven as well. When we, when we um, textured it up, we textured it up as one object with the oven and the oven doors. But we're going to bring them in separately again because the door has to be uh, turned into a physics object. The same with the grill. One of the grills is... Um, the grills are going to be separate objects as well. So let's start by bringing in the oven body. rename this oven body underscore mat and I just want to check the, the model to make sure it is actually correct yep that's, that's right so we don't have the grills and we don't have the doors so that's that's fine so let's bring the textures in for the oven body so that one, that one, that one, and that one. Sniper Echo! Hey, Sniper Echo! Uh, Smurf says the, it's a spooky magic house. The kitchen can be on the... Look, the kitchen could be on the ceiling, yes. I'm not saying it couldn't be. All I'm saying is if we do want to put things in the cupboards that the player has to actually use or pick up, I don't think they're going to be able to reach them if they're on the ceiling. They're not going to be able to open the doors. But you are right, it's a magic house. Things could be any which way we want. Oh, it's good to see you, Sniper, though. Hope you're well. Hope you had a good weekend. I'm doing really well. Thanks for asking, Sniper. Smurf says, I'm stinky and I need to take a shower, so I'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Smurfery. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, again, these have been brought in as virtual textures. I don't want them as virtual textures, so I'm going to turn that off. set up straight okay now we can bring them into the material let's get rid of this one So once we've finished the kitchen I've decided we're going to move back into the landscape because I have a deadline uh, of the middle of next month to get a build sent out and I really would like to get the landscape a, a little bit more fleshed out um, so basically the only room we have left to do in the building itself after the kitchen is going to be the basement 
We have rooms beyond the basement, but I've already designed them. I just haven't brought them into the engine, the assets. Um, so yeah, really the only other room left is the basement. But before we do the basement, we're going to jump back out and do some landscape work. Yep, that's that's the plan at this stage because of my deadline next month. <laughs> I've got four weeks to flesh out the landscape a bit more. Snipey Girl says, uh, Magic House, gravity inverts right where, you, where the stove is. Uh, Sniper says that he's doing all right. Crazy busy as all. The game dev is tough. It is. Tell me about it, Sniper Echo. It is tough, isn't it? Game development is hard. It's hard. Making a game is hard. Very, very hard. Hard work. Fun, but hard. Uh, let's import the oven door. Actually, I have to turn that into a physics object which I haven't done yet, but we'll bring it in so I can set it up so you guys can look at what the kitchen will look like once it's in anyway. Um, so I'm going to bring the oven door in, but I'm going to have to re-import it as a physics object after the fact is what I'm trying to say. I'm not doing a good job of it, but that's what I'm trying to say. I'm um, just trying to work out why it's brought in to here. So where is that door? Oh, I, I know. One is the glass on the front of the door. That's the reason. Um, 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 I'm just going to work out which one the glass is. The glass is, is, is. The glass is material 258. Okay. So this one. We're actually going to swap that out for a glass material, but so I'm just going to call this uh, oven door glass. I'm actually going to be deleting that one. Uh, so I'm going to rename this one to oven door door material. And let's bring in, did I? Yeah, oven door. So we want that one, that one, that one, and that one. Let's pull these in to the shader. Um, sorry. Sniper says, Phil, are you using virtual textures? No, I'm not. We did trial virtual texture streaming um, around six months ago in Unreal, and we did not like the the, the performance of it. it. It it wasn't good. I mean, it was yeah. It, it it took too long to load the virtual textures in, and so I, things were popping in, and I didn't like that. And the other guys at the game studio didn't like it either, so we removed it. Um, so yeah, we did trial it. We trialed virtual texturing, um, but we decided that it was not performant enough. It, did, it did, wasn't wasn't behaving well. I don't know whether that's what what's going on with that in the Unreal Engine, but it, yeah, we didn't we didn't like virtual texturing. We removed it. So no, we're not. Long story short, we're not using virtual texturing. We did trial it. Though. Sniper says to Sniper Girl, how are you doing? More photogrammetry work. Sniper Girl says, no photogrammetry weather hasn't been good for it, reg regrettably. Uh, she says, been UVing mostly. I have almost everything in the gas station UV. Cool. So you guys know how much I hate UVing. It's the worst part of 3D for me. Um, Sniper Girl says, all it needs to be UV to like half of the tool boxes, the tank storage holder, and the workbench. Snipe says, wow, you are making great progress. Snipe Girl says, I uh, think that's all that needs to be UV that's currently in the scene. Still going to model some lights and stuff. We'll also need the UV the boards too after I get done sculpting them out so I can make them low. Um, 
She's using my to do the UV mapping. Okay, so we've got the door, we've got the oven, we just need to bring in the grill. And let's rename this one. Oven. Door. Grill. Mat. And import the textures. And again, the grill is separate because it's going to be a physics object that the player can interact with. Because why not? It makes it more interesting for the player if there's things they can open and close and all that sort of jazz. It makes the world less static. Because that's always a problem sometimes with games. Things can just be too static, they don't, which makes them less real. It's the whole reason we put a lot of plants in the building as well, because they move in the breeze and it adds, helps to add a life to the, uh, to the game. Okay. So, near, yeah, so where we, we decide we were going to put the oven, we were going to put it here, and then we're going to put the fridge here, I think. Uh, Snappy Girl says, I'm trying to ensure that I keep a constant textile density using the same textile density that they used at uh, Vicarious Vid Visions. Reasons for using Maya. Snappy says, uh, okay, you're back to work now or not? I don't think she's back for a while. Uh, she says, uh, He says, I can't remember how much time has passed since you were all. Snappy Girl says, uh, no, did, it, did an art test for Vicarious Visions back in the day, environmental art test. Was happy with the overall results they got with the textile density they used. No, I think she's still on holiday though, Sniper Girl. Uh, sniper Echo. <laughs> oh, these snipers. Okay, so let's bring the uh, oven in. And I'm not sure the oven scale is going to be correct, so we're going to have to play with that. And I knew it wouldn't be correct, so <laughs> let's scale it back. It's around the wrong way, let's rotate it. Now I know the oven should be around about the same height as the bench. So. Because generally if you uh, look at a kitchen, you'll find that the ovens are about the same height as the kitchen as the uh, benches. They could be a little higher. But they shouldn't be too much higher. Let's scale it back just a tad. Just a little bit. And as position goes, we'll probably put it around about the middle. Yeah. Uh, actually, I might... might move it more toward the counter a little bit because we have a little bit of space here I can put a plant or something make it look a bit more interesting and we'll give ourselves enough room so that we can put a plant or something in that corner uh, it also allows us to make sure the door opens without hitting anything because we are going to have a covered door here and a door here. So. Sniper Girl says, my, no, my last day of leave of absence is the 3rd of next month. Oh, nice. Sniper Girl says, that's great. Nice to have some time off. 
Mm, it would be, wouldn't it? Like, uh, you guys know um, I, I take my mid-year break the end of June, beginning of July, so soon. Which is the other reason I have this deadline of the middle of next month. And you guys know I, I need my break this year. I'm so tired. Because <laughs> this game development stuff is hard and doing Astrobiz is hard. When you're doing so many projects, because I'm, I'm doing four projects at the moment. Was doing six, but now down to four. Uh, Snipe is, uh, Sniper Girl says, yeah, for sure. Um, she says, I don't know if I'll make my deadline and have everything done then. Still have to go through a lot of tutorials to figure out how I want to do things material-wise in Unreal. Sniper Echo says, uh, have any of you ever used texture color profile image in your material? I don't believe so either. Sniper Girl says, I don't believe so. I don't think I have either. Texture color profile image. What is it exactly? Sniper says you will get there in the end once you're happy with it and don't force or rush it. That's right. Sniper Girl says, yeah, I'll get there. I'm sure she will. Um, she says, I found a guide on material layering and I'm real going to tear through that. Sniper Echo says, yeah, I can't really find much info on the process, to be honest. I don't know if it's a thing. I, yeah, I've not heard of it. Texture color profile image. I'm not sure what you're talking about exactly. Yeah. Are you sure? Sniper says, yeah, material layering is really powerful. You'll love it. Yeah, material layering is really cool. But I've not heard of this uh, texture color profile image. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, uh, let's look at the scale value we've got here on the um, on the album, so we can copy it for our door. Let's rotate our door 180 degrees. And let's put it in the right spot. I've been watching the new series, the new uh, season of uh, Castlevania on Netflix. It's pretty good, actually. It's probably one of the best seasons of Castlevania I think I've seen so far. Lots of creatures, lots of blood and gore. Let's um, duplicate this for the other side. Make sure we're lining it up again. I'm gonna I'm gonna be replacing this as a physics asset anyway, so I don't know why I'm being so particular about it because it's going to be replaced. But uh, why not? Put a screenshot for my Twitter post. We'll make sure it's in the right spot. Uh, but again, yeah, there'll be physics objects the player can actually open and close. Yeah, Sniper Girl's asking, did they release another season of it? Yes, they did. They released season four about a week ago. So the new season of Castlevania, season four, is the, is the latest one. And it is, it's, it's really cool. And one, probably one of the best seasons I've watched. I'm only halfway through it at the moment. Sniper Echo says, I have it working. It's basically where you use an image with uh, scaled down UVs to provide color info for parts of a mesh. With the texture, you could have hundreds of color profile users could scroll through. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, Sniper Echo says, it's a way of enforcing color continuity across objects. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, hang on, I'm just trying to look at where I am in the chat. Snappy Girl says, uh, we'll watch that tomorrow while working. Yeah, do it. It's worth watching season four of Castlevania. It's good. Snappy Rick says, I don't know, maybe I just made it up, but it works. <laughs> Number AK says, um, I don't know if it has a proper name. <laughs> well, that explains why I've not heard of it. Because Sniper made the name up. Uh, I'm actually just going to open one of these cupboard doors because I want to put the grills in there. And if they're closed, you won't see them. Let's just make it a bit more like that. Again, this is the, the, what I'm doing. We, what you see me doing here is uh, just for for the, our sake while we're working on this. Uh, again, this will be a physics door, so I'm just doing this so that when I do the screenshot for my Twitter post, people know what's going on, sort of thing, can see what <laughs> what the oven is looking like. Uh, I might just close it a little bit more. So we can see the grills inside when I bring them in. Uh, I actually must make, let, let me do that before I forget. I have to put the glass material on the door. So let's open up the door. Uh, Sniper Girl says, have you heard of this word term that I just made up right now? <laughs> That's right. Sniper Girl says, I'm sorry, I didn't know how to explain it. Uh, I figured maybe you you your, you pros could school me on it yeah no I, no I'm not familiar um let's go into my materials and let's find a glass material sniper echo Uh, no, that's not what, what I want. Why is that? You, why are you doing this? No, we don't want textures. Am I in the wrong folder? Yes, I am in the wrong folder. We want materials. Uh, why you do this? Materials, come on. Behave yourself. Wow. All right, I'm going to have to do it by hand. It's being difficult. Unreal is being difficult. Uh, where would it be? It would be, it would be in the building most probably. So we have a few different glass materials we're using. Um, which one do I want? Probably a dirty one. A dirty material. Dirty glass, not clean glass. Uh, maybe they haven't cleaned their fridge, uh, their oven in a while. Uh, Juzan says, I was going insane with my character head. Why my character head didn't bake? Uh, it was a completely different size. <laughs> yeah, you got to make sure you line them up properly. Otherwise, you're not going to get a good bake out from a normal map. You guys know when I was, you know, you remember when I was, um, when I was creating the Art Nouveau lift and I was doing a bake out in Substance Painter and I was trying to work out why my bake out wasn't working. I had the same problem. I was, I, it wasn't that one was bigger than the other. One was out of, just out of alignment. And that just, just that little bit out of alignment through the whole bake all. We did work it out, but yeah. <laughs> they must be aligned correctly and sized correctly. Uh, Sniper Echo says, so think of it like this. You have an albedo map and you want to change the color of it in Unreal. So you could multiply the albedo 
by a three vector node. Technically, you could pick any color shade. Uh, with this method, you can specify a specific color shade. You hate mobile autocorrector mobile. <laughs> yeah, okay, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're doing. So you you want to change the color of the albedo. So you're using a three vector node. And you want to allow the user to pick the shade or is, is it not that interactive? You just want to make variations using the three vector. Yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. I get where you're coming from. I get what you're trying to do. <laughs> um, I'm just going to find my door again and we're going to drag in. Let's try the, uh, the dirty material first. We'll see what that looks like. Yeah, look, and considering our oven is so filthy and old, I, th I think a dirty material probably suits it a bit better than, say, one of the clean materials. Uh, the reason I have so many different glass shaders here is because we use different shaders for different uh, objects in the building, like the chandeliers, the light bulbs, the uh, lamps, all that sort of stuff uses uh, its own unique shader parameter. And we do reuse a lot as well, but uh, and some of them are much heavier than the others as well. So for performance reasons, we created really light versions and really heavy versions of, of the glass shader. And one sided versions as opposed to two sided versions as well. I'm just looking through to see if there was another glass shader here that might be um, more appropriate, but I don't think there is. No, this this one I'll do. Uh, it, it does look very dirty in the editor here, but once we turn lighting on, you won't. A lot of that gets knocked right back, so it won't look quite as dirty. Uh, let's bring in the uh, the grill now. No, I'm still in materials. I don't want that. I want to be. I want to be here. Um, kitchen grill. Oven grill. Get it right, Philip. And again, I'm just going to uh, copy our scaling. And we're going to rotate it. Let's move it into our oven. Did I rotate it the wrong way? No, I don't think I did rotate it the wrong way. I'm trying to work out why the scale is a little bit off. Why is the scale a little bit off? Did I rotate it the wrong way? The scale should be identical, so I'm just confused. Make sure I copied the scale building, right? Pretty sure I did. Yeah, I did. Hmm. All right. It doesn't really matter. I believe we had two shelves in the oven. I think my oven has two shelves in it from memory. So let's duplicate it. Again, these will be physics assets the player can interact with to pull the shelf in and out. Okay. 
and also we're going to be putting a particle effect uh, inside the oven here in this bit at the back of a flame but it's a gas oven of course 1920s gas was all the rage okay let's just do a quick save I don't think Android Lost is with us today. I think he did post in Discord that uh, he was out of town. He didn't think he'd be back in time for the stream. So, but he does have some new 3D work to show us. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he's put together. Because his work is always beautiful. Uh, Sniper Echo says, I think I'll make a small video to explain. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Hopefully I will get some time to do it tomorrow. And also if I remember. <laughs> Put the video together and pop a link in the Discord, uh, Sniper Echo. Uh, Sniper Girl says, good luck on that. <laughs> uh, she says, said he'd be late and possibly will miss the stream. Yeah, I caught that. Okay, let's... um bring the fridge in now. I did do a save, didn't I? Yep. Let's bring the fridge in. Old fridge. Now again, we've got the same thing. We've got the fridge body and the fridge door, because the fridge door will be a physics thing, but well, I'll bring it in now, even though it doesn't have physics on it, just so we can uh, gauge what it looks like. The fridge probably scale will be out as well. Okay, so this one will be the fridge, fridge body. But yeah, getting back to what you're saying before Sniper Echo, there is so much work to do with games development. I'd forgotten just how much work there was. It is fun work, but man, it's a lot of work. But I'm happy, like I said, we managed, and now again, it's brought it in as virtual textures, and I don't want virtual textures, so I'm just going to go through and turn them all. Um, I am so happy that we managed to get the save and load system all fixed and done, along with the in inventory save and stuff, which was a lot more work than you would think. Uh, and we, we also use um, loading screens with progress bars, so... Even just that was a lot more work than what you would think it would take to implement. Man. A simple progress bar for a loading screen. It was a lot of work. And the save and load system as well. That was a lot of work. I even did some programming on that. So if it breaks, you can blame me. <laughs> Uh, Sniper says loading screens with progress bars is on my to-do list. I'm not sure how to tackle that one yet. Yeah, it, it, it was a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. Just, just getting the save system to work properly was a lot more complicated than I thought it would be as well. But yeah, because we had to integrate it with the inventory management stuff. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was basically a lot of variables. You had to make sure you got all the right variables saved at the right time. It was it was challenging. It was challenging. But we got there in the end. It's all all done and all good. Uh, Sniper Girl says <laughs> Phil, it's all your fault. <laughs> That's right, if you're playing the game and something happens with the save system, you can blame Phil. <laughs> Okay, let's bring in the uh, fridge door. And which will be this one and rename bridge 
still up. Uh, Matt. Let's import the textures. Uh, fridge door, fridge door, fridge door, fridge door. And let's bring them in. And let's hook up the shader. kitchen so the fridge and the fridge is huge so let's scale it back and again I knew it would be huge I should have scaled it correctly inside of the, the engine uh, inside of max but that's okay Again, I'm just looking for scale. Now I'm just going to turn around and check my kitchen out. I'm just trying to gauge height here. So I looked at my fridge and my stove to make sure that uh, I was correct. And let's pull this out so it doesn't stick through the wall. I actually think the uh, fridge might be a little bit big. I make it too small now? No, no not, not too small. Um, yeah, we won't make it too close to the bench, I think. We'll pull it out a little bit. Let's bring the uh, door in. And now, this is odd. These by copying the scale value I have on the fridge, it, the door should fit exactly. The fact that it's not tells me that there's a problem with the on the, with the um. I need to do a reset on the X form, so I'm going to jump back into Max. Let's just jump out of isolation here and do a quick save here on the kitchen. And we're going to open up the fridge. And I'm going to do a reset on both of these for the X form. Well, we don't have to um, re-export the textures or anything. I'm just going to re-export the model though. So we've got the fridge body. into Unreal and re-import both of those. Okay, now we can scale this up. Mm. 
Let's just make it a little bit bigger. Trying to gauge scale here. Might make it a little smaller. I think I went a bit too big. That door. I might rotate the door open a little bit. Just judging scaling. I think we should be all right. Yep. Yep. I'm just going to come from the doorway so I can get an idea of how things are looking. I'm just wondering if the fridge would look better against this wall and the oven would look better here. Just not sure. Hmm. Let's do a quick save. Sniper Girl says, "Well, wow, Maya does have a good Maya does a good job with uh, auto packing UVs now. Max does a good job too. Um, you guys know I work in Ryzen UV to do my UV mapping, but I still do the packing at Max because I like Max's pack tool. Right. Um, yeah, so I'm just not sure whether." Well, what I think we'll do is we'll bring the rest of the furniture in, but what I might end up doing, I, I don't, I might end up moving the fridge up against this wall here, the back wall, and we may move the oven here, just, just not quite sure. Because remember, we're going to have a pot rack hanging from the ceiling as well. Um, I'm just worried that the uh, fridge is uh, overhanging the center of the floor a bit too much. So I'm just, just not quite sure about the fridge. Sniper Echo says, I can tell you the whole UV process in Blender isn't great. Well, that's a shame. But remember, Blender is free, so, you know, we can't go bagging it too much. Uh, it, and it's a great piece of free 3D software. Blender. Yeah, I'm just moving around the kitchen here to get an idea of... Um, how things are looking as far as positioning goes.
Yeah, I think what, what we'll do is I'll wait till um, I bring the other pieces in. So we're still going to bring in the pot rack and we have to bring in the table which sits under the pot rack. I just want to make sure that we have enough room if we bring that table in that the player can get around and move around the table. That's my other concern. Uh, the pot rack won't be a problem because it hangs from the ceiling, but I don't know if we're going to have enough room to put that table in. Um, we might get enough room if we move the fridge over here and move the oven over here. But I think we'll look at that tomorrow anyway. I think we might leave it there for today, guys. Um, I do want to thank you though very much for hanging out with me, being here and for watching. Uh, <laughs> Jisan says, ooh, blender. Sniper Girl says, uh, I know the reason for not switching to Blender. Sniper Echo says, I grabbed some UV add-ons which work well, so I'm happy, but Ryzen is so fast overall, it's hard to beat. Yeah, so thank you guys though very much for hanging out with me and for watching, for being here. Uh, I'll be back on again tomorrow, of course. We will finish putting the furniture in the kitchen. Um, and we'll see how we go with our lighting this tomorrow. If, if I get the furniture in in time, then we, we can look at doing some lighting in the kitchen. But tomorrow's stream, we will uh, continue working on the kitchen in the Unreal Editor. Uh, you guys and girls, take care. Have a great evening, wherever you are in the world. You're quite welcome. And I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow. See you guys.